وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد The lecture inshallah ta'ala today is going to be about Laylatul Qadr That's inshallah ta'ala the topic that I will be speaking about inshallah ta'ala The way that I plan to tackle this topic is in 10 different steps I'm at 10 points inshallah ta'ala the first point is Mafhumu Laylatul Qadr What does Laylatul Qadr mean? What's the definition of it? Linguistically and technically I'm going to define both So I'm going to linguistically define it And I'm technically also going to define it Inshallah Ta'ala The second Bi'idhnillahi al-Kareem point is Laylatul Qadr Has it come to an end? When the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said فَرُفِعَتْ It was uplifted Does it mean that Laylatul Qadr is over? Or does it mean something else? Has it ended at the time of the Prophet? Or is it something that's going to carry on until the Day of Judgment? The third point inshallah ta'ala is Laylatul Qadr is in the month of Ramadan We're going to establish and prove that Laylatul Qadr is in the month of Ramadan, not in any other month. Number four, Laylatul Qadr is in the last 10 days of the month of Ramadan. We're going to establish and prove that Laylatul Qadr is in the last 10 days of Ramadan. Point number five, inshallah ta'ala, is Laylatul Qadr, it moves within those 10 days. It's not restricted to a particular day. It moves within those 10 days. It could sometimes be this month, sometimes it could be, sorry, sometimes it could be this day, or sometimes it could be that day, within the 10 days, within the last 10 days of Ramadan. The sixth point, inshallah ta'ala, is alamatu Laylatul Qadr, the signs of Laylatul Qadr. Number seven is dua Laylatul Qadr, supplication at this particular night and what should one say and what should one come with number eight khasais and fada'il laylatul qadr virtues and rewards that have come regarding laylatul qadr <coughs> number nine kitmanu laylatul qadr hiding laylatul qadr if you've reached it if you've seen it if you felt that you caught it Conceal it and don't tell no one. Number 10, inshallah ta'ala, is going to be su'al and jawab. Question and answers, inshallah ta'ala. That you guys will be able to ask any questions that you want. And inshallah ta'ala, whichever of those questions I have the knowledge and the ability to answer, I will inshallah ta'ala answer. Let's start with the first point, which is Laylatul Qadr. What is the understanding? What does it mean? As you can see, Laylatul Qadr is a component of how many words? Two words. Layla and Al Qadr. And the Qaida is the principle is, according to the scholars, Wal Mufradul Muda Wal Mufradul Mudafu in Tarakaba Maghiri Hata Atama Lakaba, Fahadhu Yakunu Bil Ifradi Likuli Wahidi Ladan Nukadi, Thumayu Adu Thani and Murakaba, Id Lakaba Ladi Himu Tarakaba. If Something is compounded of two things. We will have to define each one individually. So we would have to define Layla, and then we would have to define Al Qadr, and then we will mention what they both mean together. And it's very important that you understand the definition of things before you go forward in what? Before you go forward in trying to understand the virtues that have come regarding it and its rulings. Because the scholars they say, 
To place a ruling on a matter, to place a ruling on a matter will only come when your perception is right. When you've correctly perceived it. <coughs> so what does Layla mean? In the Arabic language, the word Layla it means Min shamsi when the sun sets ila al fajr thani to the what? To the correct time of Salatul Fajr. So it's when the sun sets, Maghrib time, until Fajr, that's called Layla, night. And that's the linguistic usage of the word Layla, it's night. And the istilahi meaning, meaning the Sharia, ah, it hasn't changed it. It has used exactly the linguistic meaning. It borrowed the linguistic meaning and it has used it. So it means the same thing in what? According to the Sharia. Ah. Now we move on to the second term, which is Al-Qadr. What does Al-Qadr mean? The scholars, they mention three meanings. We will only take the two correct opinions, inshaAllah ta'ala. The first one is, Al-Qadr means Laylatul Qadr. Al-Qadr means Al-Sharaf wal-Waqar wal-Azamah. It means honor, virtuous, majestic. That's what the word Al-Qadr means. And this is based on the ayah, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ they have not venerated, they've not glorified, they have not honored Allah the way He deserves to be honored. وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ The word that's used here is what? حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ So the Qadr means what? Sharaf. They did not honor Allah the way He deserves to be honored. And if you go to Surah Al-Qadr, you realize that that's the meaning that it's using. Because Allah says, وَمَا أَدْرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ خَيْرٌ مِّنْ أَلْفِ شَهْرٍ Muhammad, what do you know about Laylatul Qadr? Laylatul Qadr, khayrun, it is better than a thousand months. Then Allah is here, what is he doing? He's honoring, he's venerating the night of Laylatul Qadr by saying, Wama adraka. What do you know about it? This istifham, this interrogation, this questioning, it's because Allah is trying to show that it's not a light matter. So he's honoring it. And that's the first meaning that it holds. And to show that that's another meaning that it has is in the hadith in Sahihain in hadith Abi Huraira that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Man qama ramadana imanan wa ihtisaba ghufira lahu ma taqaddam min dhanbih Anyone who stands Amma man qama laylat al-qadri Anyone who stands, sorry, the night of laylat al-qadr Iman, belief of Allah and ihtisab, he hopes reward from Allah ghufira lahu ma taqaddam min dhanbih his sins will be forgiven for him. Pay attention here now. The hadith mentions that if you stand that night and you pray, what will happen? Your past, your sins that you've done will be forgiven for you. This is honoring this night. And then the first meaning that it has is what? A sharaf. That this night has got virtue. That's the first meaning. The second meaning that it has is أن الله يقدر فيها Allah destines inside this night ahkamu tilka sana. The things that are going to take place the year. It's a yearly qadr. There are scholars mention there is how many qadr? There are qadr which is shamil. Every single one of us, before we got created, thousands of years, Allah wa ta'ala wrote that which is going to take place. This is the qadr which is shamil. There's a second type of qadr, which is the one Allah took a covenant with us. وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ الَّذِينَ وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ بَنِي إِسْرَاءَ وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِيثَاقَ When Allah took a covenant with us, the children of who? ذُرِّيَةِ آدَمْ The lineage of Adam. Allah says to them, أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَى شَهِيدِنَا أَن تَقُولُوا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ إِنَّا كُنَّا عَنْ هَذَا غَافِلِينَ We all take a covenant with Allah. A promise. This is the second type. The third type is the one in Sahih Hadith Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. إِنَّ أَحَدَكُمْ يُجْمَعُ خَلْقُوا فِي بَطْنِ أُمِّهِ أَرْبَعِينَ يَوْمًا نُطْفَةً ثُمَّ يَكُونُ عَلَقَةً مِثْلَ ذَلِكَ ثُمَّ يَكُونُ مُضْغَةً مِثْلَ ذَلِكَ ثُمَّ يُرْسَلُ إِلَيْهِ مَلَكَ 
فينفق فيه الروح ويؤمر باربع كلمات بكتب رزقه واجله وعمله شقي او سعيد this hadith mentions when you in the mother in the womb of your mother another qadr was being written for you there's the yearly one now the yearly one is with this one as Allah mentioned in the Quran, Inna anzalnahu fi laylatin mubaraka, Inna kunna munzilin, Fiha yufraku kullu amrin hakim. That night, Laylatul Qadr, is the yearly one. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He destines that whole year was going to take place. And there's another one which is the yearly one. There's a year, daily, sorry, daily one. The next one is daily. There's a Qadr, happens daily. Allah says in the Quran, Kulla yawmin huwa fi sha'n. Kulla yawmin, every day, Huwa fi sha'n is another affair. There are people Allah is forgiven that day. There are people whose necks have been freed from the hellfire. Are we together, brothers? So every day there's also a qadr. Laylatul qadr is the yearly one. So this is the second meaning that it has, which is what? That that day, the reason why it's called al qadr is because Allah destines the yearly qadr. The yearly things that are going to take place. That's the second meaning. And those two qawl that I mentioned, are the two strongest qawl. There's a third qawl that some of the scholars mention, um, which they say it means a tadiq tightening. It, they said the reason why it's called tightening is because the angels descend that night. And when they descend, they descend in large numbers. And so the earth becomes very tight for them. It can't carry them. They're too much. And they use the ayah that Allah wa ta'ala says, تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ the angels descend and Jibreel also descends. So they say the angels are coming down that night, the earth is tight. That view is the weakest of the two. The first two are strong. And those two views that I mentioned, two great noble scholars mentioned it. Ibn Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala and Ibn Qudama. Ibn Hajar mentions it in Fathul Bari and Ibn Qudama mentions it in his al Mughni, which is the Sharh of Muqtasar al Khiraqi. Now we've understood what Laylatul Qadr means linguistically. We know what Layla means. We know what Al-Qadr means. What do they both mean together now? What do they both mean together? They both mean together, when we bring it together and we make it one word, Laylatul Qadr, it means Al-Layla, Laylatul Qadr, Layla Mubaraka. It's the blessed night. Min layali al-ashri al-akhira, al al akhir from the last 10 days of Ramadan. Allah sent this particular night, He sent down Fiha Al-Quran al the book of Allah. The Quran was sent down this night. And in this night, Yufsalu, Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala judges and He destines the yearly things that are going to take place. Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. That night is better than a thousand nights. That's the definition of Laylatul Qadr. It's better than how many? A thousand nights. A thousand nights is equivalent to 83, sorry, 84, um, 83 and four months. It's equivalent to 83 years and four months. If a person just reaches Laylatul Qadr, that's as though he stood up for 83 nights and four months. When we speak about its virtue, we'll tackle that more inshallah ta'ala. The second point now inshallah ta'ala which is Laylatul Qadr is going to remain until the Day of Judgment. Some of the scholars, they thought that Laylatul Qadr ended. Some scholars mentioned that. And the reason why that mistake came to them was from the hadith of Imam al-Bukhari in his Sahih in hadith Ubadat ibn Samit. Bukhari narrated this on the authority of who? Ubadat ibn Samit radiallahu ta'ala anhu. That Ubadah said, Kharaj al Nabi, the messenger came out. He came out sallallahu alayhi wa sallam liyukhbirana so he can inform us bi laylatul qadr. The messenger came out to inform us of laylatul qadr. Fatalaha fulanun wa fulanun. A quarrel took place between two individuals. Fakala min al muslim two Muslims they quarreled. Fakala Rasulullah the messenger then said, Kharaj to I came out liukhbirakum bi laylatul qadr. I came out to inform you about the laylatul qadr. Fatalaha fulanun wa fulan. So and so, and so and so, they quarreled. Farufi'at, it was lifted. Point, this is the point that the scholars, this dispute came from. Was Laylatul Qadr in its totality uplifted? That it no longer live, exists? Or is the Ta'yeenu Laylatul Qadr, the specification of Laylatul Qadr, 
and that Laylatul Qadr is going to take place on this particular night, is that what's lifted? Are we all together, brothers? Pay attention here. The hadith says, Farufi'at, it was uplifted. What was uplifted? The Laylatul Qadr in totality? Or what was uplifted was the specification of Laylatul Qadr being at this particular night. The strongest is that it means the specifying of Laylatul Qadr to a particular night that has been uplifted from the Prophet's mind. He doesn't know what night is going to be from the last 10 nights. He doesn't, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Like Laylatul Qadr will remain. It does exist. It will exist until the Day of Judgment. And what's the evidence for that? The evidence is for that, number one, the hadith itself. Wa the hadith itself is the evidence. Why? Because the Prophet said, lakum. It is possible that there is good in it for you. فَالْتَمِسُوهَا Look for it. فِالْتَاسِعَةِ وَالْسَابِعَةِ وَالْخَامِسَةِ Look for in the 29th, the 27th and the 25th. And if it's gone, the Messenger would not have said, number one, it's good for you. Because if it's, it, won't be, it won't be good for us if we miss this great virtuous night. Second, is he would not say to them, look for it. The fact that he said, فَالْتَمِسُوهَا Look for it. Is an indication to show that what has been uplifted is the particular night in which Laylatul Qadr is, that which we don't know. And, and Imam Ibn Mulaqin, rahimahullah, in his kitab Al I'lam bi Fawaid Umdat al Ahkam, he transmitted an ijma' that Laylatul Qadr is going to remain. He said, Ajma' man yu'tad, man yu'tad bihi min al ulama'i ala dawami Laylatul Qadr ila akhir al dahr. Ibn Al Mulaqin said, it is by consent, anyone whose ijma, anyone whose words is taken into consideration, I mean any scholar whose speech is given weight, they've all unanimously agreed. We're not talking about those who have no value, no, they're not they're pseudo scholars. We're talking about men yu'taddu bihi, those which we hold on to, the great imams. All of those imams unanimously agreed that Laylatul Qadr will remain ila akhir dahr until the Day of Judgment. That it will never come to an end. That it will never come to an end. Now we move on to the third point, point inshallah ta'ala, which is Laylatul Qadr is in the month of Ramadan. Laylatul Qadr is where? It's in Ramadan. It's not in any other months of the year. What's the evidence for that? We have to bring two ayahs together to prove that. Allah told us, Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. It was in the month of Ramadan Allah sent down the Quran. If we take that ayah, فَإِذَا ضُمَّتْ الْآيَتَانِ If we bring the two ayahs together, what are the two ayahs? شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ Which month was, was the Qur'an sent down? The month of Ramadan. In which particular night? Allah says, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ So Laylatul Qadr is the night which the Qur'an came down. And the month that it came down, Allah already told us, which is what? Shahr Ramadan, what does that prove to us? That Laylatul Qadr is part of what? Shahr Ramadan. Does that make sense to everyone? The Quran came down, Allah told us, in which month? The month of Ramadan. And Allah also told us that the Quran was sent down on a particular night, which was what? Laylatul Qadr. Laylatul Qadr is a night part of what? Ramadan. Are we all together, brothers? That two ayahs. Ayah, فَإِذَا ضُمَّتِ الْآيَتَانِ If we bring the two ayahs together, بَعْضُهُمَا إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ We bring them both together, then we will realize from that, بِيَقِينِ اللَّهِ شَكَّ فِي Certainty with no doubt, that Laylatul Qadr is what? فِي شَهْرَ رَمَضَانِ is in the month of Ramadan. Also the Prophet Hassan clearly said it. عليه الصلاة والسلام He said, in the hadith al-Imam al-Nasai narrated in his sunan, أَمَا الْإِمَامُ النَّسَائِ أَمَا الْإِمَامُ النَّسَوِي You can say it in those three ways. He narrated in his Sunan and Ahmad rahimahullah in his Musnad in Hadith Abi Huraira that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Atakum Ramadan the month of Ramadan has come to you Shahrun Mubarak is a blessed month Farad Allahu alaykum siyamah Allah has made obligatory on you its fasting Tuftahu fihi abwabu sama the doors of the sama is open Ahmad's wording is different the wording of Imam Ahmad is Tuftahu abwabu jannah the doors of Jannah are open, not the doors of the Sama. Nasa'i's wordings is the door of the Sama. Like in Ahmed's wording is what? Rahimahullah. 
that the doors of Jannah are open. fi abwabul jahim and the doors. This is the Sa'is weddings. Jahim, which is nar, the doors of the hellfire are closed. fihi maradatu shayatin. The shayatin, the stubborn, hard-headed, aimed uh, uh, shayatin devils, are chained. Lillahi fihi. Allah has in this month. Laylatun, a night, a lillahi fihi, a fi shahr Ramadan. In the month of Ramadan, Allah has a night. In this night that we're going to speak about is in which month? It's in Ramadan. The Prophet says this. Laylatun khayru min alfi shahrin. A month better than a thousand, a thousand months. One night, sorry, that's better than a thousand months. Man hurima khayraha faqad hurim. And anyone who misses out that night, Laylatul Qadr, then that person has lost everything. If you don't get hold of Laylatul Qadr and you miss out and you're prevented from it, then wallah, you, what else can you receive in this world? If you've truly missed that night, you have lost everything, wallah. There's nothing to live for after that. A night that's equivalent to how long, brothers? 83 years and four months. 83 years and four months precisely. Not including Laylatul Qadr, by the way. When, it's, when we say 83 years and four months, we don't mean Laylatul Qadr is in it. Meaning the, the next year of Laylatul Qadr is not in it. So this is why. Now we're going to move on to the fourth point. Laylatul Qadr, brothers, is in what? Fil ashri al-awakhiri min Ramadan. It's not just in Ramadan, but it's in what? The last ten nights of Ramadan. Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, Qalat, Qala Rasulullah, she said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Taharru Laylatul Qadr. Strive, work hard for the night of Laylatul Qadr. Fil ashri al-awakhiri min Ramadan. Strive, exert effort. Put your hard work in Laylatul Qadr this night. Fil ashri al-awakhiri min Ramadan. It is in what? It's in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Wa fi riwayatan li Bukhari. And Imam al-Bukhari wording is different. He said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yujawiru. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was one who would do mujawara. Mujawara, what does it mean? It means i'tikaf. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would do i'tikaf fi al-ashri al-awakhiri min Ramadan in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Wa yaqulu, he would say, taharru laylat al-qadri fi al-ashri al-awakhiri min Ramadan. Look for Laylatul Qadri in what? In the last 10 nights of Ramadan. He would say that sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa fi riwayat al-Bukhari, iltamisu. Look for, strive to find it. So why would the messenger do i'tikaf the last 10 nights of Ramadan? Because Laylatul Qadr is in it. And also the hadith benefits a second thing which is, the messenger said, taharru Laylatul Qadri fi al-ashr al-awakhir. Look for Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 nights. Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Uritu Laylat al Qadri, I was shown the Laylat al Qadri in my dream. Thumma ay qadani ahlihi, thumma ay qadani ba'du ahli, some of my family woke me up. The Prophet said this. Fanusituha, I was made to forget it. Forget it. Harmal ibn Yahya, who is Ahad al Ruat al Hadith, he narrated it slightly different. He didn't narrate it as fanusituha. He narrated it with the dubbed of fanasituha. I forgot it. And the other wording is what? Fanusituha, I was made to forget it. Faltamisuha fil ashil gawabiri. Look for it in the last 10 nights. The hadith says, Faltamisuha, look for it. Fil ashil gawabiri. Look for it in the what? The last 10 nights. Aisha also said, in the Hadith Sahih Muslim, كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يجتهد في العشر الأواخر ما لا يجتهد في غيره. That the messenger, he used to work hard. He used to exert effort. In the last 10 nights of Ramadan, that which he would not exert in any other time in the year. And in any other time in the, in the month itself. He would work hardest in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ يَجْتَهِدُ فِي الْعَشْرِ الْأَوَاخِرِ مَا لَا يَجْتَهِدُ فِي غَيْرِهِ The fact that the Prophet will work hard and exert more effort 
in the last 10 nights of Ramadan is an indication that these last 10 nights are what brothers? Laylatul Qadri is in these last 10 nights. Finally, Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hadith is narrated, the hadith which is mutafakun alayhi, he said, she said radiallahu ta'ala anha, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ida dakhala al-ashr al-awakhir, that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was, ida dakhala al-ashr, ay ashr al-awakhir min Ramadan, if the last 10 nights of Ramadan entered, ahya al-layla, he would revive the nights, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَأَيْقَضَ أَهْلَهُ He would wake up his family. Another riwayah says, وَاجْتَهَدَ He would exert effort. وَشَدَّ الْمِئْزَرْ أَمَا وَشَدَّ مِئْزَرَهُ He صلى الله عليه وسلم would tie his waist. And the وَشَدَّ الْمِئْزَرْ Ibn Hajar and others, they mention it means that is a kinayatun عَنِ ابْتِعَادِ عَنِ عَنِ النِّسَاء أَمَا اعْتِزَالُ النِّسَاء It's a kinaya that he would boycott his wives and he would stay away from them. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would have no sexual relationship with his wives. And another wording is that he used to do what? Ijtihad. And he used to exert more effort. That's what it means. Shadd al is when you go to the gym and you want to work out, you want to pick up a lot of machines. What do you do? Huh? And the machine, the weights are big. What do you do? You wear it, huh? Ha, ah, you put that on. This is a, also, it means that when the person exerts efforts. So this is what the hadith means. Point number five, inshallah ta'ala, which is Laylatul Qadr, as we mentioned before, mutanaqila. The Laylatul Qadr, within those ten nights, it moves around. It doesn't, it's not specific on any particular night, it moves around. It can sometimes be the 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and if that month has, to, it, can, it moves from those ten nights. So last year could have been the 27th, that doesn't necessarily mean that this year is going to be the 27th. It moves. And this is the qawl that Imam al-Nawiyu mentions. He says, وَأَجْمَعَ مَنْ يُعْتَدُ بِهَا عَلَى وُجُودِهَا وَدَوَامِهَا إِلَىٰ آخِرِ دَالِ الْحَدِيثِ الصَّحِيحَةِ الْمَشْهُورَةِ قَالَ الْقَاضِي وَاخْتَلَفُوا فِي لَيْلَةِ الْأُخْرَىٰ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْأُخْرَىٰ وَهَكَذَا وَبِهَذَا يَجْمَعُ بَيْنَ الْأَحَادِيثِ وَيُقَالُ كُلُّ حَدِيثِ جَاءَ بِأَحَدِ أَوْقَاتِهَا وَلَا تَعَارُضَ فِيهَا قَالَ وَنَحْوُ هَذَا قَوْلُ مَالِكٍ وَالثَّوْرِ وَأَحْمَدُ وَإِسْحَاقُ وَأَبُو ثَوْرٍ وَغَيْرِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّمَا تَنْقُلُ فِي الْعَشْرِ الْأَوَاخِرِ مِنْ رَمَضَانَ This قول he attributed it to who Imam Nawawi rahimahullah he said this is the view of Malik and Thawri and Ahmad and Ishaq and Abu Thawr and other than them they all believed that it moves within those last 10 nights and that's the strongest and the most accurate view the reason is because there are many ahadiths that have come each and every one of them specifying a night in the last 10 nights some narrations said the 21st some said 24 some said 30 uh, sorry 27th some say 29th there's 40 views in this issue 40 qawl ibn ajr brings in fathul bari the only way that you can bring all of those views together and all of the ahadith together and bring them together is to say that it's in ramadan the last 10 days of ramadan and it moves it's not at a spe specific night that it moves so that makes us brothers what work hard until the last day of the pronunciation of eid we don't give up. Our efforts and our hard work is through the whole last 10 nights. Because we could, it could be any of those nights. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made signs for Laylatul Qadr. We may not know it, but there are signs to see that it came and it happened. This moves us to the sixth, sixth point, inshallah ta'ala, from the 10 points that we said we're going to go through. Alamatu Laylatul Qadr. The signs of Laylatul Qadr. Ubay radiallahu ta'ala anhu Ubay ibn Ka'b radiallahu ta'ala anhu He mentions the alama of Laylatul Qadr When he was asked Bi ayy shay'in yu'rafu Laylatul Qadr Somebody asked him and they said to him How would we know that what we What happened last night was Laylatul Qadr How are we going to know? He said Bil alama there are signs O bil ayah There are indications and there are signs Alati akhbarana rasulullahi which the Prophet told us about. And what's the sign? Annaha tatlu'u yawma idhin la shu'a'alaha That day, Laylatul Qadr is day, the sun will rise la shu'a'alaha with no ray. The sun doesn't have no ray in it. That's the sign that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us. Abu Dawood's wording, it says, Ya Abu al-Mundir, 
anna alim tadalik abdul as you know ubay that night that day that year ubay he swore by allah he said wallahi ubay swore wallahi i know that it was tonight laylatul qadr is on the 27th so they asked ubay how do you know it was how do you know it was the 27th he said there were signs that the Prophet told us that we can, we, I recognize that it was Laylatul Qadr. Zir, Zir ibn Hubaysh, who was another companion, was then asked, okay, this, Abu Mudir, what was the signs that he mentioned? What were the signs that the Prophet told you all? And he added extra signs. Ubay mentioned the signs, and Zir ibn Hubaysh, another companion, he told other signs. He says, Susbihu shams sabihata tilka layla, mithla tasti la shu'a la hatta tartafi'a. He said that the following morning of that particular night is like mithla tasti, like a vessel of water in it. La shu'a alaha, it has no rays hatta tartafi' until the sun fully rises. Tirmidhi says, Akhbarana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam annaha laylatu sabihatuha tatlu'u shams laysa laha shu'a'un. It's going to be, the Prophet told us, that it's a night the following morning, the sun will rise. Laysa laha shu'a. There is no what? The, the sun doesn't have no ray whatsoever. And other, other characteristics that I, I chose to leave is that the earth is going to be sakina and al-waqar. And that is mentioned by the hadith of Ubadat ibn Samit in Imam Ahmed's Musnad. Point number seven, inshaAllah ta'ala, which is Laylatul Qadri. The night of Laylatul Qadr. What should the supplication of a person be? Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha asked this question on our behalf already. Qalat, she said, Qultu ya Rasulallah, I said to the Messenger of Allah, Araayta in alimtu ayyu laylati laylatul qadri. O Messenger of Allah, if I come to know which night of laylatul qadr it is, ma aqulu fiha, what shall I say in that night? قال the Prophet said to her, قولي say اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فعف عني. Say that. Oh Allah, you are one who forgives and you are generous. تحب العفو and you love to forgive فعف عني forgive me. And Imam Tirmidhi narrated and this is authentic. Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said ما من دعوة يدعو يدعو بها العبد that there is no supplication that a slave supplicates with, asks Allah tabarak wa ta'ala afdal, more greater than saying, Allahumma inni as'aluka al-mu'afat. Allah, oh Allah, I ask you to forgive me. Fi dunya wal akhirah, in this world and the hereafter. The scholars, they differed on its authenticity. This hadith is Sunan ibn Majah. Like, wal raji'u, tasheehu. What is authentic, the hadith is sahih. Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, hina qubidha al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when the Prophet was taken away, Meaning when the Prophet passed away, Qama Rasulullah, he, he, uh, Abu Bakr stood up from the, amongst the people and then he said, Qama Rasulullah, the messenger stood up. Fi mawq, fi maqami hadha, this place that I am standing, once upon a time he said the Prophet stood exactly here. Am al awwal, and he said that the Prophet stood like this in this position once upon a time in the first year. Thumma baka Abu Bakr, and then Abu Bakr cried greatly. Then he said, Abu Bakr, Alaykum bis sidq upon you is to be truthful people. Fa innahum al bir, truthfulness is with righteousness. Wa huma fil jannah, and both of those, truthfulness and righteousness, are the path to jannah. Wa iyakum al kadib, stay away from lying. Fa innahum al fujuri, because lying is with transgression. Wa huma fil nari, and both of those are in the hellfire. Wa salullah al muafat, and ask Allah to forgive you. In this world and the hereafter, فَإِنَّهُ لَمْ يُؤْتَ أَحَدٌ بَعْدَ الْيَقِينِ خَيْرًا مِنَ الْمُعَافَاتِ For verily, no one has been given after certainty better than mu'afat. That Allah forgives you and cares for you and protects you from any harm, worldly harm and He protects you from the hellfire. So this word, إِنَّكَ عَفُوٌ تُحِبُّ الْعَفْوَ فَعْفُ عَنِّي is something you should increase in saying. And this night, brothers, it's from the nights in which the dua are accepted. It's from the nights when what? The dua is accepted. Also, Abbas ibn Abdul Muttalib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, 
he came to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he asked the Prophet of Allah, he said to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Alimni shay'an, teach me something. As'alullah which I can ask Allah. Teach me something which I can ask Allah. And this, they said that Abbas kept, kept, kept coming to the Prophet so much and he kept saying to him, O Prophet of Allah, tell me something I can ask Allah. Teach me a dua. Faqala, the messenger said, Ya Abbasu, the messenger said, O Abbas, Ya Amma Rasulillahi, the uncle of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al-Afiyata fi dunya wa al-akhirah. Ask Allah, Afiyah, meaning that Allah forgives you, that Allah protects you from the hellfire, and that Allah protects you from worldly harm. Ask, Salillah al-Afiyata fi dunya wa al-akhirah. Ask Allah this. And then this night is what you need to increase in asking Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Increase in asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-afiyah. Point number eight inshaAllah ta'ala is khasa'is wa fadailu laylatul qadr. The virtues that are connected to laylatul qadr. We're going to mention some of them. The first virtue is that the Quran was sent down this night. Number one is that the, this night, the Qur'an was sent down. Allah said in the Qur'an, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْقَدْرِ In another ayah, Allah says, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْمُبَارَكَةِ So the Qur'an was sent down this night. The first virtue is the kalam of Allah was sent down. Number two, Allah referred to Laylatul Qadr as a night which has barakah. Blessed night. Allah says in, an, in the ayah, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ الْمُبَارَكَةِ we send down the Qur'an in a night which was Mubarak, full of blessings. Number three is that this night is the night where the yearly Taqdeer Sanawi takes place. That whole year what's going to take place for you is going to be written on that night. Allah said in the ayah, إِنَّا أَنزَلْنَاهُ فِي لَيْلَةِ مُبَارَكَةٍ إِنَّا كُنَّا مُنْزِلِينَ فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ أَمْرًا مِنْ عِنْدِنَا إِنَّا كُنَّا مُرْسِلِينَ This night is the night where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He destines and He writes the yearly cycle for each and every one of us. What's going to happen for us that whole year? The, the fourth virtue of Laylatul Qadr is a night, the ibadah and the worship that you come with that night is what? Khayrun min alfi shahr is better than a thousand months. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. It is better than what? A thousand months. That's a virtue. Number five. And we said how much is a, a month? A, a thousand months? Eighty-three and what? Four months. Imagine you get, you catch two Laylatul Qadr. One Laylatul Qadr, brothers, is said to be more than what? It's more than the Umrul Ghalib. What is it more than, brothers? It's more than Umrul Ghalib. Ma ma'an Umrul Ghalib. It's more than the general person's lifespan. Because the Prophet said, That my ummah will live between 60 to what? 70 and little will go over it. So majority, little will go over 70. Just by one Laylatul Qadr, you're more than a general, ordinary person's lifespan. This is something that one should work hard towards. Also the fifth virtue is, Allah venerated this night. Allah glorified it. By how? By saying, وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ مَا لَيْلَةُ الْقَدْرِ Allah said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I said to you, this istifham is what? It's tafkhim and ta'zim min sha'li laylatul qadr. Allah is venerating, glorifying this night. He's doing tafkhim of it, making, making it a great night, that it's not something very little. Because the word Arabic, وَمَا أَدَرَاكَ It's used when something is not light. Also, this night is a night Jibreel comes down. Jibreel, the greatest and the best angel will come down that particular night. He will come down. And Jibreel is not going to come down except with what? With khair. As Allah said in the ayah, Allah said in the ayah, تَنَزَّلُ الْمَلَائِكَةُ وَالْرُوحُ The malaika are going to come down and our ruh, ruh is Jibreel. Jibreel was taken out of the angels for a particular reason because of his virtue and his greatness over the rest of the angels. Allah said that the angels are going to come down 
and then Jibreel is going to come down as though Jibreel is not part of the angels. Because if Allah said that the angels are going to come down, then that would have been enough. We would have known Jibreel will come down as well. But no, Jibreel is not like the rest of the angels. So he can't just fall under the, under the category of what? Angels. He's got his own specific title, which is Ar-Ruh. Jibreel is going to come down this particular night. That's what Allah wa Ta'ala told us. Also, Allah wa Ta'ala, He said that that night there's peace. Salamun hiya hatta matla' al fajr. Peace. And the scholars, they say that the peace that this night has is as salamatu fiha min al iqab. Allah is going to save you from what? Make you safe from his punishment, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn al Qayyim says that the uquba here is the uquba to dunyawi wal ukrawi. The worldly punishment, you're going to be safe from it, inshaAllah ta'ala. Allah is going to protect you from it. And Allah is going to also protect you from what, brothers? Allah is going to also protect you from the punishment of the hereafter. So, salamun hiya hatta matla' al fajr. Also, the night of Laylatul Qadr, anyone who stands up that night with two characteristics, Iman and Ihtisab, all of his sins are forgiven. In the hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari and Muslim, in hadith Abi Hurairah, Man qama Laylatul Qadr imanan wa ihtisaba, ghufira lahu ma taqaddami min dhanbi. All of the sins that you've done and that you've accumulated, that night Allah will forgive it, subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are all the virtues, and some of the virtues of Laylatul Qadr. But there's a here waqfa that I want to do, a point that I need to stand over, which is Laylatul Qadr is the best of nights. There's no night like Laylatul Qadr. But how do we reconcile between that when this, that and the statement of Allah wal Fajr wa layalin ashr? How do we reconcile between wa layalin ashr in Surah Al Fajr that Allah swore by and wa layalin, wa layalin ashri is according to the view of the scholars, which is all which is rajih, walayalin ashr is the ten days of Dil Hijjah. The first ten days of what? Dil Hijjah. So the question here that arises is Laylatul Qadri, or more like the last ten nights of Ramadan. And these ten nights of what do you call it? Uh, uh, these days of Dil Hijjah, which one is better? The scholars they said it's easy to reconcile between the two. They said that the last 10 nights of Ramadan is more virtuous, more virtuous and more greater than the first 10 nights of Dil Hijjah. But the first 10 days, days, not night, of Dil Hijjah is better than the first of the 10 days of the last days of Ramadan. So the days of Dil Hijjah is better than the days of the last 10 days of Ramadan, but the nights of the last 10 nights of Ramadan is better than the nights of what? Dil Hijjah. Are we all together brothers? So that's how you understand that Laylatul Qadri is not at daytime, it's at nighttime. Why? Because Allah says, Salamun hiya hatta matla al Fajr. Fajr when it comes in, Laylatul Qadr is gone. There's no such thing as Laylatul Qadr. So you need to benefit from Laylatul Qadr when? Ma bayna ghurub al shams. إلى طلوع الفجر الصادق أم الفجر الثاني ها from when the sun sets so, so when the sun uh, sun sets sorry until the sun rises okay brothers though that is what night means ليلة القدر it's called ليلة it's a night so that whole night you have to revive it you have to revive it Now we're going to move on to the last point, inshallah ta'ala, which is the, ten, uh, the ninth point, is kitmanu laylatul qadri, hiding laylatul qadr. If one of you spent that last 10 nights of Ramadan working hard every single night, and then Allah showed you, Allah allowed you to see that last night was laylatul qadr, you saw it to be laylatul qadr. When you looked at the signs, it became clear to you, don't tell anyone about it. And don't inform every, anyone that what you did last night and the khayr that you came with, conceal it. Ibn Hajar mentions a very powerful benefit regarding that in his Fathul Bari. And he transmits it from Sahib Al-Hawi, the Kalam, that you should hide it. Because it's a karama, Allah honored you subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the karama is something that when Allah honors you, you should hide it, keep it yourself. Also he said it could be what? Min jihati annahu la ya'manu riya. You're not going to be safe from showing off. It can tamper with your intentions and that can then destroy what you did. Because two things can destroy an action. Showing off, which is a riya, 
and a sum'ah. Both of them can destroy an action. A riya, what is it, brothers? When you're doing the action, you're showing off. You're doing it for somebody. Maybe you didn't do it. When you were doing it, you were doing it for Allah's sake. But the sum'ah can be a problem. What's the sum'ah? After you've done the action, you're telling the people about it. It can then go back to the action and destroy it. That's the difference between a riya and a sum'ah. Don't tell anyone about it. Not to mention, min jihatil adab. In terms of etiquette, Ibn Hajar says, you're going to be busy with something that you've done instead of focusing on what? Seeing deficiency in yourself. It will get rid of that. It will get rid of that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَالَّذِينَ يُؤْتُونَ مَا آتَوْ وَقُلُوبُهُمْ وَجِلَةٌ أَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِمْ رَاجِعُونَ That the believers, when they come with righteous actions, they are always scared whether the action is accepted from them. The Prophet said, أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ They are the ones, يَخَافُونَ أَلَّا يُتَخَبَّلَ مِنْهُمْ They are the ones who are scared that it won't be accepted from them. Are we all together, brothers? Also from the other angle, which is, مِن جِهَةِ أَنَّوْ لَا يَأْمَنُ الْحَسَدِ Some people are going to be jealous of you, who couldn't get up that night and couldn't pray. And so when they get jealous of you, the evil eye will come to you, he says. And then he brings the ayah of إِسْتِئْنَاسًا مِنْ قِصَّةِ يَعْقُوبِ لِيُوسُفِ what did Ya'qub say to his son Yusuf? He said to him, Ya Bunaya, la taqsus ru'yaka ala ikhwatika fa yakidu laka kayda inna shaytana lil insani aduwu mubin The dream that you saw last night Don't tell your brothers about it. Your own flesh and blood brothers. Don't tell them about it. Fa yakidu laka kayda They will plot against you. They will plan against you. And then the Prophet Allah said in the ayah inna shaytana lil insani aduwu mubin Shaytan is a clear enemy to you. So the people will jealous you and they would want this to be taken, to be stripped from you. And the evil eye will then come to you. So she didn't tell anyone. فَالْأَفْضَلْ Ibn Hajar says, أَن تَكْتُمَ وَلَا تُخْبِرَ بِهَا مَنْ رَآهَا The one who sees it should not be informing anyone else. Okay, brothers? Are you, are you with me? Not to mention, some people may not have seen it. And when you, they, when you say, I saw it, they might jealous you and say, SubhanAllah, how are you gifted to know? Are we all together, brothers? And this might then become an evil eye for you. These are the 10 points that I wanted to mention. There are other points that I chose to leave off in this lecture. Now, inshallah ta'ala, we did those nine points. I'm going to now move on to the 10th point, which is su'al and jawab, question and answers, inshallah ta'ala. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan, and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruk wa atubu ilayh.